shall we pray? Our Father, we just thank you for bringing us together in this Purity and Power Conference. Lord, I pray that as the name is, so shall the experience of the participants be. Lord, I pray that you take preeminence from the onset till the meeting comes to an end. Holy Spirit Divine, have your way. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I formally welcome everyone to this uh, conference in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're taking the first message, prepare for divine visitation. Prepare for divine visitation. Amos chapter 4. The book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this unto thee. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Hebrews, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7 By faith Noah warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. In Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah 40, verse 3, the voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare, prepare, Ye the way of the Lord. Make straight the desert a highway for our God. From the passages we just read, we could see one word featuring in all of them. Prepare. Prepare. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And the Bible went ahead to say, Noah, the righteous man, having had the Lord prepared an ark through which he saved his household from the then deluge. Noah prepared a meeting like this is a meeting that heaven really wants to come down and touch lives. I'm giving you, I don't know what to say, call it, an insight of what God intends doing. The Lord who is rich in mercy decided to attend a meeting like this to showcase his mercy towards all he created. And one of the things that will attract his presence if you look at the name, Purity and Power Conference, and you really know that for a holy God to come, 
and walk in the midst of his people, such people should be holy. And in such a meeting, we see God because the attribute or one of the attributes of God will really reign in the meeting. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter. First Peter chapter 1. From verse 15 to 16. First Peter 1. 15 to 16. It says. But as he which had called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Be ye holy. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus 11, verse 44 and 45. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 and 45. The Bible says, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. And ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we see that the holy God is being invited and he has accepted to attend the meeting that the team has to do with his nature purity purity in leviticus chapter 20 verse 26 leviticus 20 verse 26 says And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. So if there is any program God delights to attend, it is such as this. You know, in this season, Programs are all over the globe. And permit me to say that if there's any program, God will be delighted to attend. This is one of such. And I want to encourage everyone, see all you ought to do because in this meeting, from this very beginning to the end, in every segment, God will be seen. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19. I read from verse 10 to 11. Exodus 19, from verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people. And sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes and be ready. Preparation for divine visitation. Preparation for the Holy God to attend the meeting. He said, and let the, verse 11, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. I am standing 
as the Moses of this generation. And by the special grace of God, I've caught a glimpse or had a whispering of what he intends to do in this season. And he is saying, for his presence to come down and do the incredible, strengthen the faith of the weak ones, sanctified believers, baptize them in the power from on high, do miracles and deliverances, tell them to prepare themselves. I, holy God, am coming down to show myself before them. Their fathers told them what I did in the land of Egypt. 80% of them were not born at that time. I want to make them see who I am. See what I can do. See my nature. And brothers and sisters, as it was then, so it is now. And if there is a dispensation that needs the manifestation of God, it is ours. We're living in the age that people are losing confidence in God. Losing trust in God. Telling us the Bible is ordinary textbook. So many stories are coming up. But I pray and I believe as the Lord comes down in this meeting and lets the whole world, you say, Pastor, what, how would the world know? As I'm standing here, the world, whosoever that wants to watch, gets at this place. Through technology, the world can hear in the next two seconds. And so, brother, sister, you really need to get prepared. There's going to be showers of blessings. God is coming down in his power. Heaven is gathering momentum for his spiritual, torrential, heavy damper. And it will fall. And it will fall upon those who are ready, who are prepared for it. So we we'll consider two points. One, reasons for preparation. Why must we get ready? Two, readiness for divine touch. Reasons for preparation. Why must we get prepared? Number one, God has a lot of blessings for his children. And in this meeting, he has a lot. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Praise the Lord. I had not seen. Pastor Water hasn't seen it. Neither has it entered into any man's heart. What the Lord has prepared for them that diligently seek him. That's a lot of goody goodies. Chunky chunkies. God has laid in store to be released in this meeting to as many who may desire. Isaiah 64 Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4 Isaiah 64 verse 4 says for since the beginning of the world Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither had the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. Chai. 
I, I want to read that again. He said, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. Stop there, look up. Since the beginning of the world, men had not heard. It has never been on record. Chai, how I wish I'm talking to people who are willing to grab eternal truth. How I wish I'm talking to people who will see this as God speaking unto them. How I wish my people will believe it as they believe what prophets of our days tell them. God going to do this. Amen. And they are ready to die for that. And when they are not even sure whether it was God that said or the man told them their mind. But the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Many kings had risen and fought this book. They all died and this book is standing. Many presidents had written, risen to fight this book. Did all they could. Declared it a taboo. And whosoever that handles it must be imprisoned. Where are they? They've all gone. And yet, the book is standing. Why can't we depend upon that which that has been tested and proved? Why can't we stand upon that which is real? You see, since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by ear. Neither had the eye seen, O oh God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. What is he saying? Since the inception of the world, now, it has been written for someone to believe in. It has been said for someone to appropriate. It is laid bare for somebody to lay claim. I don't know whether, am I talking to people? Are you, do you, are you getting my expressions? Let me tell you, A, may read it and say that's the word of God. B, may read it and doubt his doubt and say, <laughs> everything on that song, I lock you up. That which no man had perceived through his ear or heart, God has never done. And he wants to do for me in this meeting. Abba, anything can happen, I don't care. Jehovah cannot lie. He cannot tell a lie. Why must, do you know why people lie? One of the reasons why people lie is the person cross-examining them has power to punish them. The person asking them is super. The person trying to interrogate them can say, I will not give you this. That's why they tell a lie so that the individual can do that. Whom does God fear? He said that we do this. He has all it takes. For not doing it means he does not want to do it. Not that he doesn't have the ability. <clears throat> Listen to this. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus entered synagogue. And they gave him a scroll. The Bible we have now was not in this form. It was like... In fact, Apostle Paul called it parchment. It's, it, they were in parchment, scrolls, folded, and they gave it to him. He op this is the way they used to open it. 
And then, in that scroll given unto him, that's the Bible, is just a lot of things were there, but he found where it has been written concerning him. Some people say, Pastor, what are, what are you saying? I'm coming back to this passage, but let me tell you what I'm, I'm saying. Luke chapter 4. Open your Bible. Luke chapter 4. Because I need to stress this fact so that you will do what Jesus did and you become a recipient of this prophecy. In Luke chapter 4, I read from verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as the, his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to do what? To read. And there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. That's Isaiah. And look at this. And when he had opened the book, he found a, the place where it was written. Now, the book of Isaiah, as we all know, is from chapter 1 to about chapter 66. Now, he opened it. He couldn't start reading from chapter 1 to chapter 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, 30, 40, and all the rest. Look at what he did. He said, and there, verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the book of prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me. Now, what is it? The Old Testament is Christ's concealed. The Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, all talking about Jesus, but concealed. The New Testament from Matthew to Revelation, all talking about Christ. Christ revealed. In Old Testament is concealed. In New Testament is revealed. And now, it, where it was written, in Old Testament, and finally, please, uh, somebody help me in the control room. Where it is written that a Messiah shall be born. And it was Prophet Isaiah that God used to say about his birth, the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Emmanuel and all the rest. It was still um, prophet Isaiah that talked about his earthly ministry, his death, his burial, his resurrection. See this prophet. prophet. And now Jesus hadn't physically come in the Old Testament. It was a prophecy that must be fulfilled one day. And behold, he has manifested. And he needed to know, how do I go about my ministry? We had the things said so that I should follow it without mincing words and hit my target. He gave him the scroll of the book of Isaiah. And then he started reading. Look at, he discovered the spirit of the Lord is upon me, verse 18. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he did what? He closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture 
fulfilled in your ears. Now look up. Somebody may ask, Pastor Walter, why did you go to read this? I read this to make you understand that when you get what the Lord has said concerning you, bury yourself there. There's no too much of, look at it, he picked few verses in that chapter in the book of Isaiah. He would have continued reading. He would have continued, say, let me do it. He said, no, I've discovered why I'm here on earth. And he told the people, this day is this prophecy fulfilled in your eyes. He handed the book over to them. He began to act upon the said word. And no wonder what the Pharisees saw, what the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, and the scribes saw, got them sh shaking. We have never seen a man like this. We have never, they, they didn't know it has been spoken before he came. Brother, sister, I read this to tell you this. Can we go back to where we were reading? Isaiah chapter 64. Isaiah 64. Verse 4. Look at it. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard. Sorry. Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear. Neither had the ear seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for me, Pastor Water. I don't know about you. The Lord is saying, it has never, that in this meeting, I shouldn't expect what is conventional. <clears throat> that in this, from now henceforth, in my life, I shouldn't expect what is conventional. Something that is acceptable. Everybody does it. Everybody knows that one plus one is one, is two. Everybody knows that two plus two is four. Am I right? It is it's acceptable. But the Lord is saying, since the creation of the world, it has never been known, heard, seen, what God has prepared to do for them that wait upon him. Are you among those that are waiting upon him? Sister, brother, if you believe as I believe. You see this meeting. What you have never seen in your life, your spiritual life, your, oh, your financial life, your physical life, everything about you, the Lord is saying, by the time he will finish offloading what he had in stock, waiting for your attention, those that laughed at you will turn around and celebrate you. Yeah. Brother, let me tell you. This is old time faith. Sister, listen. Everything is not all about binding and losing. Once you have discovered for me, do you know, if I tell you, this may be the first time I, I'm coming across of this verse. It will shock you. And now, I've settled on this verse. Anything I'm about doing now, I don't, do, I don't want to expect the result others have been expecting. Because God told me, what he will do through me and for me. He has never done it before elsewhere. And that is my expectation. So, by the time I will begin to think or talk or act or behave, some may say, Pastor Water is arrogant. How can this say, you village man say he will do this? Who has ever done it? Nobody needs to do it. Because God is saying he will do that which 
It, no, it has never been on record. I don't know who we believe God. Sister, I don't know who we believe God. Listen, forget about your condition. Forget about the family you came from. He that is talking to you is the owner. If Mr. President comes down here and says, you, you, come. I will give you a contract that will take away poverty from one generation to another generation. Will you believe him? Yes, he has all it takes. He can say, Commissioner of Works, give him contract, 10 billion. Yet, all you will hear is yes, sir. Or else he will fire. He has the power to hire and fire. Am I talking? But this is the creator of Mr. President. This is the president of presidents. This is the God of gods. This is the... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Brother, okay, I will just manage to go through my outline. But I have found where I will bury myself. I, I'm, are you hearing me? Jesus found where it has been written concerning him. He said there's no need to continue reading. He closed the book, handed it over to them and began to work on what he believed. In this meeting, may somebody's expectation be greater. May somebody, I don't, you know, some people feel, well, it could be one of those things. Brother, he is not one of those things. My sister is, let me tell you, some people will be walking on top of the water without sinking. Marching through the fire without getting burnt. God is going to bring his word. Listen, somebody needs to believe it before it will come to pass. I don't know your experience. I want you to trust God. It's going to be wonderful. Now, let me just quickly I discipline myself to go through my outline. But I found what I'm looking for. Have you discovered what you are looking for? In, oh my God. Can you mark it in your Bible? Did you mark that place? Oh, get it right. After this meeting, continue telling the Lord. In this community where I came, in this compound full of wicked, this wicked that. Daddy, you told me that what you will do for me and for my family. It has, since the world began, it has never been on record. See, listen. When God is saying a thing, he had seen that no power can stop him if there is somebody that can believe it. Oh, oh God, this wicked uncle, this wicked household enemy is here. Shut up. You believe that thing and you're telling God, this is where I stand. He knows how to sort them out because his word will not fall on the ground. He must make sure that his word comes to pass in your life. And I'm trusting God it will come to pass in Jesus' name. So we're saying one of the reasons why preparation is very important is God has a lot of blessings in stock for his children. Number two, unready people will be locked out of God's blessings. Those who are not ready, those who are not prepared will be locked out. In Matthew chapter 25, from verses 1 to 13, you see the case of uh, 10 virgins. Five were foolish. The other five, they were wise. And were ready. The wise one said, there is no, let's go and fill our lantern with oil. The foolish said, no, what, what are we doing? The, the time is short, it's long. By the time the master will come and bless, I think we will get ready. And by the time they knew it, there was an alarm. The bridegroom comet. And it was far in the night. And their wig has burned low because the oil has gone down. He says, sir, please, can you give us oil from here? He says, sorry, go to the, the city, get your own oil. By the time they could go and come back, the bridegroom and the bride, they've all entered and they locked the door. They began to knock. Open for me. Open for me. Why coming late? They were not ready. They were not prepared. I pray God will not lock you out. I pray all you have heard, God will do. 
you will live to become a partaker of his blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, nobody knows the time of visitation. Very important. Why must we be prepared? Nobody knows the time when the Lord will visit. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 to 44. Matthew 24. Forty-two to forty-four. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now you see, when we talk about this, we conclude on second coming. We conclude on rapture. That's all right. At the same time, in the gathering of the brethren like this, nobody knows at the, the time God will come and visit His people and go. Since you don't know, you have to be prepared. The time, the hour, the minute, the second knows no man. And he says in verse 43, but know this. If the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also what? Ready, be ye prepared. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now, we are talking about the rapture, or talking about his coming, but we are now I'm narrowing it to him visiting us in this meeting. Coming in. Do you know, not every meeting that God attends, not every, any, any program you think of, but People will praise God. People will worship, but check very well. He may not even be there. It will end up becoming religious gathering. I pray the meeting uh, this season will not be a religious one, but the one that God will be in our midst. Ask us, children, what's your need? Touch our lives and we'll go home rejoicing. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. John chapter 5, from verse 1 to verse 9. John chapter 5, he said, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. And, sorry, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk of blind halt without waiting are you can you see waiting i love that waiting why waiting nobody knows the time waiting i pray you will be patient enough to wait for god you've toiled all nice but can you be patient enough to wait and say, no matter what is going on in this uh, season of Easter, I will wait in the presence of the Lord. So that the Lord can do something remarkable in my life. And he said, verse um, 3, In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at certain season nobody knows that season brothers and sisters as we are gathered here here may be like our pool of Bethsaida no and here we are told that angel will come and go once he steers the water any person that is sick that dives into the water gets healed and what happened the people left their cities that were sick, all surrounded that, to get closer. Just in case the angel visits by 2 a.m. and steps the water. The first person, why? All sickness, no matter the sickness, will disappear. And because of that, there was a lot of sick folk there. That was angel, but a day came. The great physician 
visited. The great physician visited. Verse 5. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. And when Jesus saw him lie, and, uh, sorry, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man who, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. Now, this man has suffered for 38 years, and has been at this pool of Bethsaida for many months unattended to. But because of her patience, she was just there. Who can carry me impotent? Who can carry me down there? Nobody. There he was. Instead of the Lord going to steer the water, the Lord went direct to the person. You know, those who had known the ways of God will have problems with what I've just said. A meeting like this, he said, no, I will only come on Sunday. And that's the time everybody wears new clothes. And we just come and celebrate the Christ resurrection. That's all. Today, that is their understanding. Little did they know, it could even be even tonight. Even be, just be at the beginning and Nobody should be saying, is it not opening prayers? Is it not they do this and do that? And the Lord comes in. Touch, just a touch. Just one touch. The deed is done. It's the matter becomes over. And so something happened. The Lord changed, God changed pattern. He used to send angel. Instead of sending angel, he sent his son. His son came. Everybody's eye was on the water. But the Lord was where the people were. What are we learning from there? Remove your eyes from what you used to know. Believe the Lord for what he's about to do. Those of them that knew him very well, God will send the angel inside the water. All their eyes were on the water. That day, God changed methods. Permit me to say, in this meeting, God has already changed method. To those who had programmed, preempted God, they will be missing God in this meeting. Congratulations for you who is here. Congratulations, your life will not remain the same. It will shock you. That thing prayer couldn't do. That thing hour of deliverance couldn't do. Purity and power conference is providing a solution. I say is providing a solution. It may not be by praying. It could be hearing the word. And in this meeting, you will hear God speak. In this meeting, God will touch lives and all the rest. So, what, why should we be prepared? Number one, God has a lot of blessings to give his children. Number two, already people will be locked out of God's blessings. Number three, nobody knows the time of visitation. Number four, expectation determines realization. With what I told you in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 4, do you see I've memorized it? <laughs> I will bury myself in that verse. And those of you who are hearing me, watch out the events, what will be happening. I, I'm, am I talking to somebody? Uh, can, can somebody help me? memorize? What, what did I say? Isaiah what? 64 verse 4. Brother, if you are a youth, start believing it, claiming it as a youth. You are a business, businessman. Start believing it, claiming it. Others may use jazz. Leave jazz. When God comes on board, jazz will be nowhere to be found. I want you to believe the Lord. And look at it. He said, expectation with what you just read in Isaiah 64 verse 4. Your expectation should be high. 
this problem, you will not follow me back home. This situation, the Lord said, what you will do, it has never been in the ear of any man. And I know you are one of them. He will crush. You are talking to yourself. Am I talking to somebody? And you are believing the Lord that he will. And dearly beloved, on or before Sunday, it's already turned into testimony. Yeah. Number five, hearts not prepared cannot receive even when the Savior is discussing with them. The heart that is not prepared cannot receive even when the Savior is discussing with them. In the book of uh, in the book of Luke chapter 24 from verse 13 to 35 Luke chapter 24 verse 13 to 35 something happened. And what is it that happened? Jesus had risen. It is noise abroad. He has risen. He has risen. Hey, what kind of a thing is this? And two men were returning from Emmaus, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And behold, something happened. A personality joined them and asked them, Ye men of God, what, what are you discussing? They looked at him. Are you the only one in, in this land that didn't know what happened? Say, please, what is it that happened? Okay? <laughs> the way you ask the question, it's like you don't know. We will lecture you. There's one man called Jesus. This is the third day. After his, we, the story we had is, he has risen. Eh? That was Jesus. And they were walking. And they were discussing. And they were walking. And they got to a T junction. He acted as if he wanted to continue his journey. And the people were diverting. They constrained him. They pleaded with him. Come and eat with us. For it is night already. He went to the house. They brought food on the table. He received it and blessed it. Immediately he blessed it. Their eyes opened. This is Jesus. He vanished away. From them. Oh, they began to beat their chest. Hey, child, if I knew he is the one that has been discussing with us all the questions we were, he would have cleared all those doubts in our heart. They left what they were doing. They ran to Jerusalem. They told the brethren, He has risen. He has risen. He looked at him. How? Where? This one, forget all the lies they are telling. He was with us. We took, he followed us to the house. Oh, it was a moment of joy. But brothers and sisters, thank God for their eyes that got opened. Assuming it got opened while they were on the road discussing, they would have been more blessed. Am I talking to somebody? I pray that in this meeting, May your spiritual eyes of understanding be enlightened. May you be ready that whenever he is talking or moving, any move of God, you grab it. It is only those who are ready. But those who are not ready will sleep and the thing will bypass them. So I will get to the last point, readiness for divine touch. Having seen God's willingness to bless, we must be ready to receive. In Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14, from verse 15, Luke 14, from verse 15, the Bible says, And when one of them that sat in at meat with him had these things, he said unto them, Blessed is he that shall eat. Let me go straight from verse 16. And he said unto, unto, unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and begged many, he invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidding, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. 
The fox said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidding shall taste of my supper. Praise the Lord. Now, we have seen the willingness of God to bless. But the issue is, are we ready to receive? Jesus told us of a story. A man who had a wealthy, a wealthy man who had a big party full of eating and drinking. There are people he specially invited. Send them to come in the evening for a wonderful get together. This one said, oh, sorry. Help me tell your master. I just bought New York of Oxen. And I need to go and test how gallant they can walk. Have me excuse. Okay. okay. The other one said, oh, I just got a piece of land. I, that time is the time I want to use to go and see that farm. Have me excuse. The other one said, you can see, I just got married. Tell your master, I won't come. Now, the food was prepared for these people. And they used excuses, fill the house, and rejected what the king wanted to offer. In our days, it's not like that. Oh, Pastor Water, you know, this season is when my customers used to come. Pastor Water, I can't come. Or, I can only come on Sunday. And then, or, come in the night. By the time you'll be rounding up the prayers, at least I'll collect the prayers and go. Because my customers are too many. I wouldn't want to lose any of them. Customers can give you what you want now. But they will not give you what you want later. Money can afford what you want now. But what you will need most. Money may not. But how come it is this time? Now, let's analyze their excuses. I bought a yoke of oxen. Animal. I need to test how... How they work. Okay. That is why you cannot just come. And who knows whether in that great gathering. Something higher will be given to you. He didn't consider it. I bought a piece of land. I need to go and see it. And that's why I can't come. Can't you see it any other day? And use this moment to know what the king wants to offer unto you. They didn't reason that way. Oh, I married a wife. And they tell him, I can't come. The wife you've married, she remains with you until death shall separate. If you don't see your wife, the next two hours, wouldn't you see her after the meeting? That's how the devil deceived them. I pray the devil will not deceive anyone. Our businessmen and those of us who are into buying and selling, I pray buying and selling customers will not hinder you from getting that which God had already said. No man has had. It has not been in the ear of any man. Since the creation of the world. What the Lord has prepared for those who will wait upon him. I pray you will not be deceived. You believe that? Can I hear your amen? amen. In Matthew chapter 22 verse 4. Matthew 22 Matthew 22 verse 4. Again, 
he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. I declare to everyone, all things are ready. Heaven has prepared a lot of blessings for this generation. Come, all things are ready. So as part of our preparedness to be blessed in this meeting, the followings are highly essential. One, availability. Make yourself available all the time. Morning session, evening session, make yourself available. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, he say, Whom shall I send? Daddy, I'm here. Don't, I, I didn't go far. I'm around. Here am I. Send me. Two, punctuality. Being there on time. It starts 8 in the morning. You, before 8, you're already there. Not 8, you start leaving your house. Punctuality. So that what happened to the foolish virgins will not happen to you. Three, open heart to receive. Come with open heart. Lord, I am ready. Since you have made this declaration, Isaiah 64. Verse 4. Here I am. I'm ready. Two. Eight, four. Readiness to accept any instrument God chooses. You must be ready to accept any instrument God will use to or, or, I don't know which word will I use. Offload. Empty. The blessings he had for you, you must be ready. You won't say, I'm of Apollos. Oh, who is there? Apollos, no. Let me wait until Paul will mount the podium. I'm of Paul. You wait for Paul. You know, as God changed pattern, instead of sending angel, he sent his son. People were looking at the water, pull up beside her. The son of God was in the crowd. And those whose focus was on the water, because that's the way, and it must be the way. And if it is not that one, we will not accept it. Brothers, God doesn't work that way. Be open. He can use anybody to give you what you are looking for. Be open-hearted. And I know God will really be, bless you. Then be spiritually alert. I may call it spiritual perception. Be spiritually alert. To know when the Lord, it could be a clause, not a sentence. A clause in a sentence. It can make an everlasting impression in your life. So, and because you are alert, you say, I've picked this. And that which you picked will carry you through your journey here on earth. Dearly beloved, having said all this, God is now saying, all things are ready. Angels are ready. The Father is ready. The Son is ready. The Holy Spirit is ready. Pastor Water and his team were all ready. Are you ready to receive? Rise up on your feet and let's tell the Lord. Lord, help me to really prepare for this meeting. I wouldn't want anything to remove my focus. All distractors be at arm's length. I keep you aloof. Stay aloof of me. God, I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey the living word of God, child. I am ready 
to obey thy word, thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. Amen. I am ready to obey thy word. In Jesus' name. I am ready to obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey thy word. I want you to close your eyes and tell the Lord that I am ready. Have your way. I make myself available. I will not come late to any of the meetings. Lord, have your way in my life. Do that which you have planned to do. Have your way. Open your mouth and begin to tell the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the message we've heard. King of glory, I'm praying, O oh Lord, that you give us the grace to abide by all that we've heard. We've seen the necess necessary things that are needed for us to receive that thing that are prepared for us, which no man have heard or seen the grace of lord the heaven to abide by all the necessary things give to each and every one of us in the name of jesus that we will not miss any of the blessings may we not be like the five foolish virgins may god help us to be the five wise ones that we are ready waiting until the time that the bridegroom came. Father, give us such wisdom to wait until the necessary blessings you have prepared for us be given to us. May we not depart from your presence in the name of Jesus. We cover the message with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm praying also, Lord, in heaven that has with Go today, help us to continue to meditate and pray on all these points. And study the words that we've heard. That will help us, O Lord, to prepare, to get prepared the more. Give us the grace to do that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for an advance that. For in Jesus' name, we pray.